Hey guys, we're here in Virginia at an undisclosed location where a large corporation is doing a nature reclamation project. Now, as part of that project, they're installing 35 of our four chamber bat houses to provide roosts for bats in the area. We really appreciate the work that they're doing and are thrilled to be a part of it by providing the bat houses. Now, what we're going to do today is take you on a small tour and show you a few of the bat houses being installed and how they're going to be uh, mounted on poles and uh, just kind of give you a general idea of what's happening. And hopefully by watching this video, you'll get some ideas on how you can install your own bat house. We hope you enjoy it. Hey guys, well we're here today. We'll take a minute to talk to Jim Kennedy here. He's a bat biologist. To tell us a little bit about you know what you do and and how you're involved in this project. Thanks, Robert. Um, yeah, I worked for Bat Conservation International for 17 years. I was originally hired to help run the North American Bat House Research Project. Um, since then, I've gone out on my own, started my own company, Kennedy Above Underground, and I do a lot of bat things and a lot of cave and karst things as well. Because in my free time, I'm a caver, and I just I love going underground. So. Cave bats are going into caves and mines and places like that in the winter to hibernate because they're, they're living off their stored fat year round. They're not staying active in the winter. In the summer, they're not using those places. They're out here in the forest as well. But they're looking for things like these trees. You see these big snags here? They have bark that's flaking off. They have old woodpecker holes. They have storm damaged ends. So there's little cracks and crevices that they can get into as well. But not all these trees in the forest are going to be suitable for those kinds of bats. You need to have something that's going to get warm. You want something that's emergent, sticking up out of the canopy or on the forest margin where they get lots of sun. We don't have very many of those kinds of things remaining because of our modern forestry practices. You know, a lot of times those things are considered hazards and they're removed. So that's why we put up bat houses. We are mitigating for the loss of these kinds of natural features. And we're trying to provide bats roosts for the summer months where roosts don't exist. On this property we're going to visit today, we're going to see a lot of great habitat, great forests, great fields, wetlands, lots of great diversity. But there's not a lot of available roosts. So what we're trying to do is put up these bat houses here that will uh, allow more bats to use this property and it, they'll be a lot more successful than they are now. Well, one question we get uh, repeatedly is where do I put my bat house? Now, in a location like this, where, where would you see putting a pole and putting a bat house up and why? Well, what I would look for is some kind of a clearing. I would look for an opening, but I wouldn't put the bat house out in the middle of the field because that's not secure for the bats. When they're coming and going, they're going to be really accessible to hawks and owls and other avian predators. But you want to put it near a forest edge. You got some nice trees here. You got a big grass area in front of us. I would probably put it within 20 to 40 feet of this forest margin. Close enough that the bats can find cover when they're leaving, but not so close that some predator can perch on a branch right above the bat house and swoop down and get the bats as they're leaving. Well, we appreciate your time. We're going to catch up with you on the property here as these 35 bat houses go in and we'll show our viewers how the bat houses are, are mounted, how the poles are put in place and concreted in, and I'm sure it'll be interesting for everybody. It'll be interesting, but this is a big, uh, impressive industrial application. Like you said, 35 bat houses. So we're trying to be as, as efficient as we can. I don't expect most homeowners are going to have the kind of equipment we're going right. to be using, but don't let that intimidate you folks because, you know, putting up a bat house isn't rocket science. If you have a ladder, you have some old material, you can, you know, get a bat house, build a bat house, put up a pole, or find an existing roost around your house, something to mount it on, a building, a barn, an existing pole, no problem. Bat houses work all across the United States. I highly recommend everybody put up at least one bat house on your property. I have two at my property myself, and, and I have a little, little tiny lot. Okay, well we appreciate the time. Thanks Robert, good working with you. You too. Uh, 
it's a uh, two inch inside diameter schedule 40 steel pipe and they source this locally uh, it's been cut to oh 18 or 20 feet I believe was the the target and show this to you here you can see this is not your typical uh, chain link fence post pipe uh, it's a lot thicker walls uh, it's going to be more durable and steady in the future and the bracket that is used on the bat house ends up producing a, a cap for the pipe so that water is not going to get into the pipe in the future. So when we're putting in a bat house, we're digging a hole, whether you're putting in a wooden pole or a metal pole. And when you're digging, there's a good chance of hitting something. There are buried water lines in the ground. There are electrical lines, there are phone lines, there's fiber optic cable. And in this case where we are, we have gas lines. There's an eight inch gas line right here. Running along here is a 24 inch gas line with 150 pounds of pressure. And if you hit that with something and you punctured that, there won't be any bat house left and there might not be any you left. So we have to be really careful. Always call your utility companies before you dig. set here, or I should say they did, uh, not that I had a lot to do with it, uh, moral support I guess, but uh, it's set in uh, concrete and this is Schedule 40 steel pipe. Uh, it's been cut in I think 18 to 20 foot length, so we'll have a good 15, 16 feet out of the ground once it's set. Uh, bat house go on top, it's going to make a, a, a good mount for it. And we're in a beautiful location here, plenty of open space, uh, plenty of bugs, plenty of water, a little lake back here behind it. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how these uh, work in the future as the bats move in. guys in their fancy European sports cars. Race. It's a slow race.
up here because I got a frame with these uh, pine branches coming in. Very cool. thing about this spot is you that know, you've got these wetlands right over here too. So you got you know, this road's a travel corridor. The bats can either feed in this field, feed in the wetlands, or in and out this roadway uh, for commuting. It, it there's so much good habitat. We're just putting bat houses everywhere we can, maximize the chances that bats are going to be here. I always look at bat houses like going locks and the three bears. One might be too hot, one might be cold, too cold, one might be just right. The more we have, the more chances of having just right, giving the bats more options because you know, bats like options. Yeah, right there. Now back a little. There you go. That'll work. I get back in the morning sun. I know we got fingerprints on your nice pretty bad house. <laughs> but you know, it's supposed to rain Friday, those will all wash off. <laughs> yep. Well guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, got a little bit out of it. And we'd like to thank our host for letting us be here and definitely thank them for putting up 35 bat houses through the property. We know the bats are going to enjoy that. If you've got any questions or want to learn more about bats and how you can have your own bat house, check us out at www.habitatforbats.org.